Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Loop Inc, which is a game of time travel for fun and profit from designer Scott Alms. And this is on Kickstarter right now, so I'm going to be doing a run through today so you might decide if this time travel game is something you would be interested in. Now, I've already got the game set up here. I'm the first player, Jen is the second player, and in this game we are employees of Loop Inc, which is a time travel agency, which is to say people hire us to take them back in time to basically have a great vacation, either by helping to sign the Declaration of Independence, or water the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, or print books with Gutenberg, or whatever it might be. And if we can set up our time machine with the correct equipment to be able to go to whatever area it might be, or whatever era, I should say, it might be, we can score points along the way. <clears throat> and the interesting thing about this game is it takes place over one day. On one day, we are going to get to launch, you know, set up our time machine and launch one expedition into the past. But after that day is over, we are then going to use our time machine to relive that same day a second time. And so, like, you know, it was a Tuesday and we went back in time. We, you know, we what, uh, survived the Black Death, whatever it might be. And that was the end of the day. But then we start that Tuesday all over again. And now we get to do twice as much stuff because. We are still on, you know, when we go back in time, there's basically two of us on Tuesday now, the original one, and we go back to do things a second time. And then we do it a third time. This game is really, it's kind of hard to explain, come to think of it, you know, as any good time travel paradox laden game is, because we are going to, over the course of this game, loop three times and repeat that Tuesday three times. But every time we do it, our past selves are still in there. So we get to do more and more and more stuff because we we work with our past selves to achieve more and more stuff. It's really a very funky game, and I don't know if that makes sense. Wish me luck. Here we go. So, the core mechanisms of this game are super simple. On your turn, and I'll be the first player, on your turn, you do one action, and then you have the option of launching your time machine into the past. And these cards are all the actions we can do. We can go to the garage to get to, to install some stuff, either some wheels or some pinwheels on our time machine. We can go to the shop to install a camera or a net. Uh, this pinwheel is called a propeller, apparently. We can go to the armory to install some armor. We can advertise, which means if we advertise for the trip we're going to take back in time before we do it, we score more points. We can move equipment from our time machine to another time machine. We can exchange our equipment, the stuff we've got on our time machine, back with the stuff that's on the main board, and we can trash stuff. If there's stuff on our time machine we don't need anymore that would actually cause us to lose points, we can trash. And those are all the actions we're going to do. And in a given day, we are going to do three actions. But that's only on the first time we have that day. On the second day, we'll do six actions. The original three we did, plus three new ones. And then when we go back to do that day a third time, we'll do nine actions. All the actions we did on the first day and the, on the second day, and then three new actions on the third day. And uh, let's stop talking about it. Maybe it'll make more sense if I just start doing it. Okay, so <clears throat> during this first day, I definitely want to score some points by going back in time. And if I look, you know, there's a whole bunch of these cards that represent all the different trips we can take. Every time you play, you're going to get a completely different setup. And if I'm looking around, I notice one thing that's interesting. Signing the Declaration of Independence and Surviving the Black Death, they both have almost the exact same requirements. A camera, a wheel, and armor and a camera, a wheel, and a pinwheel. So, that might, that's actually a really nice overlap. I think I might want to try and leverage that by using the same equipment to do both of these trips. So, let's say I go for that. So, the first action I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to the shop. All right, so that means I take this card and I play it in front of me to indicate that this is the first action I'm doing on my first run through this day. So, the shop, as you can see, lets me take a net or camera from the shop and then I install it on my ship. Okay, let's see here. So, I want a, well, let's see. I want the camera, so I'll go on ahead and take a camera. Because remember, I need a camera for both of these trips. And I'll go on ahead and install it on my ship. You can see there's a cute little thing so it lines up. And hey, I've got a camera on my time machine. Now, I can't do these trips yet, not until I have a wheel and then either a pinwheel 
or some armor. Okay, that was my first turn. And, uh, and now if I want, at the end of my turn, I could launch this time machine, but I can't right now because with only a camera, I'm not po it's not possible for me to do any of these trips. If I had a net, I could sail with Darwin on the HMS Beagle, but you know, as it stands right now, just a net by or a camera by itself, can't do anything. So that was it. That was my first turn. Let's see now, what is Jen going to do? She will... Hmm... I think she'll go to the shop too. <clears throat> And she'll take, uh, let's see. Well, now there's only one more camera. And so if Jen wants to get a camera, she better get it now. And what is she thinking about going to do? Let's see. She could go for, hmm, I didn't really, all right. Yeah, okay, she'll go for a camera. She'll grab it while the grabbing's good, and she'll go ahead and install a camera on her ship. All right, so now it is my second turn. Remember, I'm going to do three turns today. So for my second turn, what else did I need? Oh, I needed a wheel, so I'm going to go to the garage. And I'll, I can pick up either a propeller or a wheel. I'm going to grab a wheel. And now, by the way, if it wasn't already obvious, it's going to be pretty obvious to Jen now what it is I'm going for, because she can look and see, well, what needs a, a camera and a wheel? Well, I'm probably going for one of those, so Jen can figure that out. Now, Jen's next turn, and, uh, yeah, and I, I still can't launch because I don't have the, the prerequisite equipment to go on any of these trips. So now Jen's second turn is she will, what will she do? She, well, she will do that. Yeah, what the heck, she will go to the armory. Okay, and that's her second action where she grabs some armor and installs it. All right, and so now she's got a camera and some armor on her ship. And now she could launch. You can see, discover Antarctica. Jen has everything she needs to be able to take some lucky time traveler back to help discover Antarctica. But Jen's not going to launch yet. She has the option at the end of every turn, but she's not going to do it. So the day's almost over. We each have one more turn. And so for my third turn, let's see, what did I still need? Oh, right, I need either the armor or the pinwheel. Um, I'll go on ahead and visit the garage. So I can take another wheel. I've already taken one wheel, but I can take another wheel or I can take a pinwheel. I'll go on ahead and take a pinwheel. And so now I've got everything I need. I've got the three things installed. The And now at the end of my turn, I will, in fact, take a trip back in time to... And you'll uh, to watch, to help sign the Declaration of Independence. Now... I immediately score six points for that. So I'm the green player. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I have no wastage. If I had stuff installed on my time machine that was not necessary, like if I had some armor on my time machine, I would actually lose points for that right now because armor wasn't necessary. And time travel is a tricky thing. You can't be wasteful with it. But as it is, I had exactly what I needed. So that was the end of my third turn. The, the first day is over for me because I went to the shop and then the garage, garage, got all the stuff I needed and... Got, you know, went back in time, got a six-point job done. Well done, me. Now, Jen's got one more turn. Now, remember, she could have made this trip before, but Jen's going to do one more thing. Jen is going to advertise. So she takes an ad token and puts it on any trip she wants. Now, it has to be a trip that doesn't already have a token on it. So Jen cannot advertise that she's going to go watch the signing of the Declaration of Independence because, hey, a Bloop Inc., because we both work for the same company, has already done that. So Jen can't advertise for that job, but Jen's going to advertise for the job that she was already getting ready to do. So that was her last action. She placed an ad. And the tagline of that ad? Put things in perspective. Visit the Dark Ages, which... You know, actually, I probably would have read for the... But anyway, it, it, there's a lot of really cute, funny flavor text on all the cards. That, you know, Jen has definitely laughed out loud while we're playing the game because she just loves reading all these things. But anyway, so Jen's third action was she placed an ad. And now, at the end of her turn, she is going to make the trip back to uh, discover Antarctica. Now, whenever you go to a place where you've put your own ad, you shove your ad off, and, and that scores you one point. So Jen scored one point for fulfilling the advertisement she had set up. Now, the interesting thing is, if when Jen put this ad here, she can go here, 
because you know she's kind of claimed this time zone. She could go here and score the bonus point. I could have, if, if I had the right equipment, I could have gone there instead, but because Jen had claimed it, I would have taken a penalty. I would have created a rip in the space-time continuum to go there myself. Because Jen has basically set it up, you know, the space-time continuum, so that she was the one who was supposed to go here. That's what the setting up an ad means. But if I'm the one who ended up going there, then I would, you know, you know if I had sent my own ship here, I would suffer a rip in the space-time continuum, which the first one I get is worth negative one point, the second one I get is negative three points, the third one is negative six points, and if I ever get a fourth one, I lose the game just like that. So, putting an ad down, not only is it a way to let you score a, an extra point when you eventually do the job, but if you can see that other players are going to try and make a run for, you know, you know, because there's a only a limited number of spaces that we could go back in time to visit. And if you see somebody else is acquiring the same stuff as you are, you might want to put an ad there first, so that means if they try to go for it, they will suffer a penalty. Now, it's still a problem because if they do go for it, you'll suffer a penalty as well. Because if you fail to make good on your ad, you lose three points. But, you know, if the person who is going to go there is going to take their third rip in the space-time continuum, that's like negative six points to them. So, there's a little bit of area control going on with these ads. You kind of, you lay claim to it, and in this case, I didn't interfere, so Jen's last action, after she did it, she did it and she got a point for fulfilling the ad. And she got four points for the actual job. So, one, two, three, four. Jen is one point behind me. And that was it. Our first day of life at Loop Inc. is over. Now, at the end of the day, our actual ships slide off of here. And you can see there's little arrows that they slide up or down. It, I don't know why they do. I don't know why they both just always slide down. But anyway, so we slide these off and we keep these on the board for the rest of the game as a reminder that because at some point in our space-time continuum, I had done a job to watch the signing of the Declaration of Independence. I can never do this job again. This stays here as a reminder. I, for the rest of the game, I cannot come here again. Jen could come here, but I can't. And meanwhile, I could come over there, but Jen can't come over there. Once you've done a job, you can never do it again. I guess the space-time continuum would be destroyed forever. So, that was the end of the first day. And now what happens is, you know, we've each got our time machines. They're all loaded with stuff. And now, instead of just going back to where we left, we go back to the beginning of Tuesday. And so, it's once again, we're at the beginning of Tuesday, which means all of this stuff is here. You know, the, so we have to basically refill because it's the beginning of Tuesday again and everything's still there as it was at the beginning of the game. And so, once again, we're, now we are going to go through Tuesday a second time. And here's our ship. We traveled back to the beginning of Tuesday. But remember, at the beginning of Tuesday, we already had a time machine that had nothing on it. So, we now effectively, on Tuesday, have two time machines. The original one that was always there at the beginning of Tuesday, and now our duplicate of it that we've come back here. Because, um, you know, our, our, our version of a time machine that's 24 hours older that has all this stuff on it. So now, going through Tuesday again, going through day two, we have twice as many time machines. We are going to get to do three new actions, but we will still have to do the three actions we did the first time through. And now, because we have done this, because we have messed with the space-time continuum, and we are going to exist twice on the same day, we create anomalies. For In a two-player game, two anomalies come out at the beginning of a repeated day. So there's a warp, and and there's a ta uh, tangle, and these are now two addition. In addition to all the actions we had available to us, which are still available to us, we can now also call, you know, take advantage of this warp anomaly and this tangle anomaly. And now the game begins again. The Tuesday begins again, and let's see. So Jen now has, you know, her super ship, but. You know, the Mark II, I believe it's called, the, you know, her original ship from Tuesday, plus her new upgraded ship that just traveled back to the beginning of Tuesday. And Jen is the first player because at the beginning of the second and third day, whoever is furthest behind on points, and I made one more point, Jen. I made six points, she made five. So Jen gets to go first. And going first can be a big deal. So the day starts over, and now things are pretty much the same, but there's just one extra wrinkle. Now we take our cards back into our hand, so, 
over the course of this, uh, my second run through Tuesday, I have to play all these cards, and I have to play them, in, or I'm sorry, Jen has to play them in this order. At some point, she has to go to the shop, and at some point after that, she has to go to the armory, and at some point after that, she has to advertise. So Jen is going to put another ad out here somewhere before the, before the day is over. But in addition to replaying these same actions, Jen has to do three more actions. So now, on her turn, Jen has a choice. She could do her first action. She could shop, which means she could take a net or a camera. Or she could do one of her new actions for the day. Like if she wanted to grab this warp or this tangle, well, there's only one of them, so she should grab it quick. Like, let's see, what does this do? The tangle. Place any component from the shop, garage, or armory on one of your time machines that's already launched this turn. Now, that's really interesting. In what, once a uh, time machine launches, of course, it's it's left the it's left the office, so you can't put stuff on it. But with this tangle, you could launch and then still put stuff on your ship. That's a pretty cool trick. And the warp launch a time machine this turn. It does not lose any components from waste. So that's really interesting because Jen's got to think about what job is she going to try and do now, or potentially Jen could do two jobs because she's got two time machines available to her. But the only limitation is she cannot ever do this job again, which is too bad because she's got the perfect ship to go back and... Oops. Oh, crap. Did I take the wrong stuff? Oh. Oh, oh, whoops. I'm sorry. Jen was going for this one. I, sh I don't know. I, I should have taken a, a net. This job required... I don't know, I'm blind. It was a net and a spike, not a wheel and a spike. My mistake. All right. So there we go. So Jen did this job. And so Jen's got to be thinking about what jobs does she want to do? She could do two jobs. Now, sailing with Darwin requires a net and a camera. So if she got rid of this armor because she doesn't want to have wastage and got put a camera on here instead, she could sail with Darwin. So, how would she get... Now, to get rid of the, this armor, so she could do this job, the way she can do that, she could trash the armor, she could exchange the armor and, and move the armor off, put it back over here, and then grab something else, or she could move the armor from her old ship to her brand new ship, or from her later ship to her earlier ship, so she could do that. And then, after that, for her next action, she could go, you know, so actually that's pretty good. Let's have her do that. So Jen's eyeballing sailing with Darwin on the HMS Beagle. Right. And she needs, right. Okay. So first thing Jen's going to do is first action, she's going to do a new action. She is going to move items, move a component from one of your time machines to another. She will move this armor from her, her older machine to her newer machine. All right. And that was her first action. And now, you, when you play a new action on the day, you kind of put it here tilted like this as a reminder, because Jen's got to play these ones, these old actions, plus she must play three new actions. And so you put the new actions tilted like that so you can keep track of what was new and what was old. All right, so that was Jen's first turn. And now I've got to do something, and I've got to be thinking the same thing. I've got the perfect ship to go do this, but I can't. But remember, I was already thinking ahead. I want to modify this ship now so it can go survive the Black Death. And... Which means I need to drop the pinwheel and get some armor. Alrighty. And, but I have to remember, I am also going to shop and go to the garage twice. Now, going to the garage twice means today I'm going to have to either pick up two pinwheels or two, you know, two propellers or two wheels. If I'm going to pick those up, what am I going to do with those? Well, oh, this is pretty nice. Uh, playing Mayan ball court requires two wheels and a propeller. And, yeah. So, that's perfect. I mean, with these actions I did on the first day, I can use those to start outfitting this to do that on the second day. And then, in the meantime, I am modifying this so I can use this for a different job. Right, okay, so that's a pretty good plan. So, what do I want to do? I need to get two wheels and a propeller and an armor. Right. And meanwhile, this guy, I've got to get the propeller off. So, it would be good to move this propeller over here. And, um, right, but this guy also needs to get some armor. I need to get some armor on here. So I think, yeah, first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a new action as well. I'm going to go to the armory. And I'm going to put this. Now, I could put this on my new machine, but I'm putting it on my old machine to get my old machine ready to go. Okay, so there we go. That was my first action of, of the second day. And now it's Jen's second action. So... 
Now, I think she's not going to do a new action. She's going to use one of her old actions, the first of them. She is going to shop, which means she can pick up a net or a camera. And what was it that she needed? She needed a camera. So now she's going to pick up a camera and install this. And so, her old ship is now ready. Jen could make the trip right now and come over here to get on the Beagle and score three points. But remember, Jen's going to have some advertising coming up soon. If Jen waits a little bit before making the trip, she could advertise for it and score some more points. But, you know, she's always got to be a little bit nervous about what if somebody else goes there ahead of her because there's a limit. The first player, you know, up to two players can visit a region or a time zone once per day. The first player doesn't suffer any penalties. The second player to do it on the same day suffers a penalty. Now, Jen can look and see what I'm doing, and Jen's pretty confident I'm not going to try and go there. So she doesn't have to rush for that. She's going to wait, and she, if she can place her ad on here so she can score extra points before she makes a turn, even though she's ready to do it now with her ship. Okay, so now uh, that was Jen's second turn. It is my second turn. And so now the interesting thing is oh, that's pretty cool. Now, I remember, I want this job to go play ball in the Mayan court. Wait, no, what was it? Yes, because I, all right, I need another wheel and I need to lose that. So I need to get another wheel. Right, so I am going to repeat one of my first rounds. So now I'm going to do shopping and I'm going to get that wheel I need. Okay, and so this guy is ready to go to the Mayan court. Although the problem is there is a, a camera on here, which will cause me to lose one point in wastage. By the way, did I say right up front, everything you're seeing here is prototypes today? You know, this is just all on cardboard, because it's not going to be handwritten notes and all that. Should have mentioned, you know, this is, I think, the final art, but it's all still prototype components. But anyway, so this ship, I could launch it right now, but because it's got extra stuff, I would lose a point. So probably I want to get rid of this camera before I launch. Or alternatively, if I use this warp power, I can launch without having to suffer any point loss due to wastage. But anyway, so that was my second action. Now it's Jen's third action. So she's already got a ship loaded up, ready to go. She's wanting to wait to advertise before she launches. So she needs to turn her attention to her other ship. What is she going to do with this one? So this one's got armor. If she could start decking it out so that it could be sent to dodge bullets at the old K Corral. Now Jen knows she's going to have to go to the armory and she's going to advertise. And now that's a problem. Because that means Jen's going to have to go to the armory. The only thing you can pick up at the armory is more armor. And Jen doesn't need more armor. Is there any job that requires two armor on a ship? No, there's not. But here's the thing. Jen's always got to be a little bit nervous. If Jen, eventually she's going to have to play this card to go to the armory. When she does it, if there's nothing in the armory because I've taken the last armor, then Jen will suffer a rip in the space-time continuum because she was supposed to do something and she can't do it. So, even though Jen doesn't need this armor, she doesn't want to suffer a rip, so she's going to go to the armory now while the going is still good and she's going to grab this. She could put it on this ship, but this ship doesn't need it. She'll go ahead and put it on here. And now this ship is overloaded. That's something she's going to have to deal with. But remember, she can, um, next round, on the, thir the third time she goes to this day, she could use her move command to move one of these to her third ship. Because on the third day, she'll have three ships. And things just start getting more and more complicated. So anyway, that was Jen's turn. Next turn, she'll be able to advertise and then do the job. All right. And so now for my third turn, this guy's ready to go. And... I mean, I have to admit, I'm kind of tempted to just go on ahead and advertise. So this is my, this is my second new action of the day. Because remember, I have to do three new actions in addition to my three old actions. So I've just done my second action. I'm going to go ahead and advertise for playing ball in the Mayan court so I can score extra points when I do it. All right. And now, I could launch, but remember, I'll still I don't want to suffer a point. So I've got to... Uh, see, because what I'm thinking is, before I launch... I can use, I can, I, I can take this warp, which means I won't suffer the wastage, or I could do a move or an exchange or a trash. So my next action will probably be one of those, so I don't suffer any points before I launch this new gig. And so now it's Jen's turn. She is going to advertise. This is her last old action. She's still going to have to do two more actions this round, but they'll both have to be new actions. But she's going to advertise for where was she going? Uh, it was, right, the Beagle. And now at the end of Jen's turn, she's going to go on ahead and launch. All right, and so she did it successfully. This gets pushed off. She scores a point for that ad, and we're all tied up. And she gets three points, one, two, three, for finishing her second job.
Okay, and she's still got a ship, which is overloaded with armor, and she's still got two more actions she's got to do before the day is out. And now it is... Right, so that, and now it's my fourth action, and... I want to launch, and I need to launch. If at the end of the by the end of this second version of Tuesday, I don't launch this, then I'll take the negative three points. So, do I launch? Let's see. How do I launch? Because there's the thing. However, I do this, whether it's move, exchange, trash, or use a warp anomaly, I have to remember I will have to do that action on the third day. Plus, I've also got something else to bear in mind. Before today is over, I've got to go back to the garage two more times. So I've got to pick up two more pinwheels. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm not done yet, right? Because I needed. Oh, no, I have the wheels. I have the pinwheel. Right, I've got everything. I just need to get rid of that camera. But before the day is out, I'm going to have to visit the garage two more times. Which means either a wheel and a propeller or two propellers. Now, what would I do with those? I'd probably put those on my new ship so I don't have to, you know, put them on here. So what would I do with that? I could... Let's see. Is there, are there any other jobs that need a propeller and a wheel? Right. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, no. I've already done that job. I can't do that job again. Oh, yeah. So there's Dodgeball Seal K Corral. So maybe I want to start thinking about before on the third day, I'll try and do this job with my second ship that I start building up. Because I know I have to go to the garage twice. In fact, what the heck, let's go on ahead. I'm going to do um, one of my repeat gigs. I'm going to go to the garage, and I'm going to get a wheel. There's only one wheel left. So I'm going to grab it while the grabbing is good, and I'm starting to outfit now this ship. Okay. Now it's Jen's turn. She's got to do all new jobs. She's got to do two more actions today. And what is she going to do? So she's got a ship with two armor. You know, and there are trips you can take that require multiple armor, but there aren't any in this particular setup. So Jen needs to be thinking about how is she going to do this? Let's see. She can't do this one. So there's this bullets at the OK Corral. Does Jen have enough time to do this? If she picked up a pinwheel or a propeller and a wheel, she could go for this and she would just suffer negative one point for having a little bit of wastage. And she's got two more actions she could do. So her last two actions, although if Jen looks up here, I just grabbed the last wheel. There are no more wheels to be had. So it would be impossible for Jen to go for this. What else might she want to go for? Uh, surviving the Black Death, require, again, requires a wheel. Jen can't get any wheels. Well, this is interesting. The you know, Water of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon requires a spike, two cameras, and two nets. What Jen could do, remember, next on the third day, Jen's going to have to use this move command. She could use this move command to move a spike back over here and start preparing her original ship for a, yet another trip to do that. That makes sense. So if Jen's thinking about that on the third day, she's going to use this move command that she has to do to move these spikes back over here. And then this would be free to do something else. She knows that on this guy, this guy needs another net and another camera which requires two more ships to the tri trips to the shop. Jen's got one trip to the shop set up. I think she's going to do another trip to the shops. This is her second new action, which means she's going to Oh, but here's the problem. I forgot. This ship has already left. So Jen can't put anything on this ship. But so instead of shopping, Jen is going to use the Tangle Anomaly. Place any component from the shop, garage, or armory on a ship that has already been launched. So Jen is going to take this camera and put it on a ship that has already launched and scored its points thanks to the Tangle. So Jen is setting herself up for this really big last job on the third day. All right, and so now it's my fifth action. And right. I totally forgot what I was going to do. But you know what? I think, actually, that's a pretty good place to stop. I'm about to go. I, I, you know, I, I, I want to launch this before the day is out. I need to because I, I've got my ad set up. I'm still trying to think about what I'm saying this for. But if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough. And I'll see if I can actually finish this game. Although, remember, on the third and last day of this game, we have to do nine actions. The three from the first version of the day, the three from the second version of the day, and the three from the third version of the day. So things get, get really complex on the last day. Or you can go to final thoughts. Your choice. Either way, in five, four, three, two, one.